Welcome to Lai Tzu. Welcome everyone. In this video exhibition, we are going to tell you about the only female ruler in Chinese history, which is during the Tang Dynasty. There will be four parts of presentation by members from Group 1, and we hope you will enjoy yourself and learn something from this video. Without further ado, let's start it now. As shown in the poster, on the 625 at the 705 common era of the Tang Dynasty is one of the golden ages of China. The glory and brightness of Chinese culture during the Tang period was in stark contrast to dark ages in Europe. The so-called Golden Age emerged shortly following the death of Wu and Tang China subsequently experienced substantial political, economic, social and intellectual development. The Tang was unified empire founded by the Li family who seized power during the collapse of the Sui dynasty. Li Yuan, later Emperor Gozhou, and his army seized the capital of Chang'an in 617 common era. His son Li Ximin, later Emperor Taozong, and future husband of Wu, joined the rebellion. In 618, Li Yuan declared himself the emperor of the new Tang dynasty. Tang China enjoyed far-reaching diplomatic relations, playing host to Persian prince, Jewish merchants, and Indian and Tibetan missionaries. The scope and sophistication of the Tang Empire's political development during these golden years was greater than either India or the Byzantine Empire. The Tang Dynasty was centered in Chang'an, a city established by the Han Dynasty on the ruins of Emperor Qin Shi Huang's capital of Xi'an and developed by Sui Emperor Wang Tu. Under the Tang's, Chang'an became a thriving metropolis and center of international trade, filled with merchants, foreign trades, missionaries from numerous religions, acrobats, artists, and entertainers. It was the largest city in Asia, perhaps the world with a population of around 2 million people at a time, when no city in Europe had a population of more than a few hundred thousand. The city was linked to the rest of China through a network of canals and toll roads which brought more riches and taxes into Chang'an. During that time, the Silk Roads were at their height of influence. During Wu's life, overland trade roads brought massive entrepreneurial opportunities with the West and other parts of Eurasia, making the capital of the Tang Empire the most cosmopolitan of the world's cities. Although merchants dealt for and traded many goods, commerce involving textiles, minerals, and spices was particularly prominent. With such avenues of contact, Tang China was ready for changes in society and culture. There is some debate as to when the Tang Dynasty began because the dynasty was briefly interrupted when Empress Wu Zetian seized the throne, proclaiming the Second Zhou Dynasty and becoming the only Chinese Empress regnant. As you can see, the figure that was shown in the poster is Wu Zhao, also known as Empress Wu Zetian, who was the first and only woman emperor of China. With her exceptional intelligence, extraordinary competence in politics, and inordinate ambition, she ruled as the holy and divine emperor of the Second Zhao Dynasty for 15 years. Wu Zhao, which is widely known as the Wu Zetian, is the monarch or the supreme leader of Wu Zhao. The name of Wu Zhao itself was taken during her coronation day. In this situation, the Wu Zhao, which is Wu Zetian, named his dynasty as the Essen Zhao dynasty, also known as Empress Wu Zetian, was the first and only woman emperor of China during that time. So, based on the background of the poster, which is before her coronation, Wu Zhao itself often acts as a de facto region for her husband in achieving her goal. To understand the word of the de facto, it means that the practices that exist in reality even though they are not officially recognized by law. In 619, Wu Zhao disposed her own son and declared herself as Huan Di. Huan Di is a mean of the emperor of her Zhao dynasty. 
As for the history based on my poster, we can say that Chinese history, all its emperor were men. However, there is one exception appear in 690, which is Wu Zetan ascended the throne and established her own Zhao dynasty in that year. Besides, she was the only empress in China history, which is Wu Zetian was born in Wenxi country, Shenzi province in 624 Common Era to a wealthy family, and she was the daughter of Wu Zishao, a counselor of the Tang Dynasty. We can say that Wu Zetian has her own speciality because she is not unlike most young girl in China at that time because she was encouraged by her own father to read and write and develop the intellectual skill which were traditionally reserved by the male only. Wu also learned to play music, write poetry and speak speak well in a public class. Based on this statement, we can say that during her administration, which is Wu Zetan itself, as a female leader at that time, women's society or community who lived in the era were granted more privilege during her reign and China was in a state of a great prosperity during her rule. Apart from that, move to the poster statement, which is the woman empowerment is the way to country development, means that during the administration of Wu Zetan itself, he made many development to woman empowerment during her dynasty, which lift up the dignity of women, and Wu Zetan also sought to improve the position of women. This was her action, which was progressive in feudal society during that time. the third poster which mainly focuses on Wu Zetian. As for this part, I am going to talk about her biography as well as her achievements and contributions to China, specifically during the Zhao dynasty. Alright, if you look at the picture on the left side of the poster, that is Wu Zetian. As mentioned earlier, she is the first and the only female emperor of China or also known as Huang Bi. She was born in 604 Common Era and died in 705 Common Era. The interesting question is how did she become the one and only female emperor in Chinese history? The answer is that her ascendancy and reign were steeped in blood and terror. She was a concubine to Emperor Taizong but she started an affair with Emperor Taizong's son, Li Xi. After Emperor Taizong's death, Wu was sent to live in the temple for the rest of her life. However, Li has fallen in love with her and called her back to the court and made her as his favorite. The picture of her in the poster visualizes her to be seen as someone cruel and manipulative. This is due to one of the horrific stories about her when she herself killed her newborn baby and accused Empress Wang to be the one who committed it. Empress Wang was then exiled and Wu Zetian took her place. Not long after that, she finally became the emperor and changed the name of the dynasty to Zhao when both of the emperor and his sons died in 690 Common Era. However, in 705 Common Era, she was forced to abdicate the throne to her son named Zhong Zhong and the name of the dynasty Tang was restored again. The Wu Zetian has been seen as a controversial figure, she has made some significant changes in China during her rule. First, she broke the culture and hid the aristocratic families. When Wu Zetian was in power, many aristocratic families objected to her as she was a woman who was supposed to have no right to be an emperor and because she was born in a family of commoners. During that particular time, commoners' family were not be able to be emperor despite the fact that Wu Zetian's father was in a high-ranking position. However, when Wu Zetian became the emperor, she exiled the people who objected to her becoming the emperor. Thus, this has given a heavy blow to the aristocratic families. Next, she has developed the economic sector. It was said that the previous emperor had tried to bring up a policy to encourage farming but it was not implemented until Wu Zetian was ruling the state. She encourages farming and collects less tax. Not only that, as agriculture during that 
time was doing well, surplus labor appeared which spurred the handicraft, textile, as well as manufacturing to be growing as well. Last but not least, Wu Zetian has successfully expanded the borders of China. Therefore, it can be said that Wu Zetian is a powerful woman in history as she was the first and the only one woman that has become an emperor. She has also gained a lot of achievements and contributed a lot to the society during that time as the life of the society was stable under her ruling. Historians also agree that it was a time when the empire was well run and its people were relatively content. The Dynasty presents us with independent and powerful women conferring the idea that the Tang Dynasty was the one era in Chinese history where the patriarchal grip was not as tight as during other dynasties. Socially, the position of Tang women was somewhat superior to their predecessors. Rather than being strictly confined to the inner chambers, compared to the previous dynasty, Tang women were assertive, active and more visible. They rode horses, done female attire, and most importantly, they also participated in politics. As mentioned before, women empowerment during the Tang Dynasty was at its peak during the rise of China's only female emperor, Empress Wu Zetian, whose support of women's rights began with a series of campaigns to uplift the position of women. For instance, she asserted that the ideal ruler was one who ruled as a mother does over her children and extended the mourning period for a deceased mother to equal that of a deceased father. However, Wu Zetian, the first and only female ruler in the history of China who breached the restriction of men's superiority to women and broke the shackles of feudal age, went a thousand miles in order to rise to the throne of the emperor on her own. She even killed her own newborn and her hit list on the way to power was pretty impressive. If rumor is true, her sister, brothers, the emperor and her mother were all supposed to be her victims. But being a woman was a large pipe why she got such a terrible reputation. Due to that, despite many of her contributions, her dynasty, however, did not outlast her. She has been depicted to be a megalomaniac by the latter emperors and even portrayed to be a ghastly anomaly by the men who wrote the histories back then. Therefore, unlike other Chinese ruler, Empress Wu Zetian's monument was left deliberately blank, known as the wordless stone still. There are various explanations, but some scholars believe that an inscription which contains about 3,000 words has been prepared based on the squares found on the front side of the steel. However, it was cancelled after the Xinlung coup, which forced Wu Zetian to give way to Li Jian, her second biological son who has always lived in the shadows. There is also a view that it is a stone of atonement set by Wu Zetian for herself. Although she is a generation of empress, she knows that she is guilty because of the methods she used in order to get to power and also during her administration were harsh and cruel and many innocent people got killed in her hands. Of course, these were just speculation made by scholars and only the empress herself knows the truth. Yet, the fact that she was overweening in her leave days but nothing was left on her monument when she died is just intriguing and enigmatic. After all, it is the cost that she has to pay for liberation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of the exhibition. We hope you enjoy your time here and thank you for watching.